this elephant is born and it has a somewhat displeasing set of ears to, to all who look upon it for the first time. They're massive, of course, and, and quote unquote freakish. And, uh, and Medici thinks that it's going to sink his circus until we find out that that elephant somehow has the power of flight. The kids find that out, my kids find that out. So they're the ones that through, through their attention to detail and through their purity of spirit, they have a relationship with, with Dumbo and they find out that Dumbo can fly and then once that's revealed to the world, then other vested interests become involved in the form of Michael Keaton's character, who is the arch evil owner of the highfalutin circus, you know, the circus that's buying up all the other small circuses in America. Tim is an absolute joy to work with and for. He really is, man. He's just, ah, I don't know what to say about him. He's, he's so intuitive. He's so, obviously the story is imbued with an incredible sweetness. I mean, it really felt like that. I'm reading it and I look at the sets now and I meet all the characters that are in the play. And there's this pervasive sweetness and sense of hope and playfulness to the whole thing. But it could dip into the realm of, of being too saccharine or kind of sickly sweet. You know, it could really just drop into that very, very easily. And Tim is constantly looking for just to pull it back. And I, I think he has a high regard for the audience and doesn't want to beat them over the head with the sweetness of the film. Um, and constantly ju just looking for the what he feels should be the tonal reality of certain moments. Nico and uh, Finley, who plays Joe, both of them are incredible and kind of perfect and very different, but work really well together and are funny together. And they're both, yeah, they're both lovely, I think. And it's, wow, well, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous world. To, you know, kids, kids are human beings too, but kids on sets, you know, can be a tricky thing, you know, and it's, it's a lot. Sometimes it's a lot for adults and, you know, you can get a lot of attention and you can get some adulation and stuff like that. And it can be somewhat intense or tricky to keep yourself grounded, but the two of them are, are really cool, man. I hate saying they're good actors, but they're good actors. I hate even talking about kids as actors, but they're, they're, they're doing amazing, doing an amazing job. And they're playful and they seem to be having fun with it, which is, if they're having fun on the set and around all the magic that's here every day, um, then I think they don't change when they get in front of camera. You know, that fun is, becomes an extension of the storytelling process and, and it's, it's on film. Colleen Atwood is just genius, man. She's just amazing. God, it's the second time I've worked with Colleen. I worked with her last year on, or the year before on Fantastic Beasts. And um, I just don't know, she just, it doesn't seem, she just has such a, a breezy way about her. And you know, she doesn't seem to be struggling or under any pressure or stress at all. And the responsibility to costume and clothes the great numbers of people because there's been days on the set where we've had I think five six seven hundred people you know background foreground circus crowd gymnasts and artists putting on the show and it's been extraordinary and every single person from the boys and girls to the men and women and every single detail every single little bit of linen every fan every sock every shoe buckle has been period and, and beautiful and ornate where it needs to be ornate. This is just like, like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, from the ground on up, every corner, parts of the set that'll never be seen on camera and the attention to detail. You know, it's just, you go in one door and it's one world, you go in another door and it's another world and it's, it's pretty astonishing really. And it's great as an actor because it just allows you to inhabit the world. It just does, as you've heard before, I'm sure, it does so much of the work for you. Um, so, you know, it's not, yeah, there's blue screen everywhere because skies will be filled in and a certain, after a certain height, buildings will be created and stuff. But anything that, that I see or interact with, anything I touch or feel or refer to um, has been there. I hope, you know, my kids may get from it the same thing anyone gets from it, whatever the age may be, which is just, just a sense of, of buoyancy and a, a sense of the relief that kind of seeing magic, but a magic that's grounded in reality, even though I know there's no such thing as flying elephants, but grounded in the reality of the interaction of all the human beings around this magical event that takes place and, and just the breath and the entertainment and the beauty of that and the beauty of seeing people come together in a magical way. Um, 
you know, if that can if that can wash over people and if it can entertain them, then that's enough, you know. The original Dumbo, the animated Dumbo, I watched five or six times during the making of the film. Um, Dumbo's in the movie. It's about it's about an elephant. It's about a family. It's about a circus family. It's about the world. So it 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 stacks up. But in fact, the point of view of Dumbo and the the sort of point of view of the camera and the point of view of Tim through that process. I mean, Tim came from animation. I think he has uh, that eye. So I applied the things that I felt the eye and the sort of nod to the original um, mattered in a way that, that for me and for Tim both and for camera. So I took that into stride. And when I referenced back, you know, the shadows and the tints, the, the, um, the clown fire gag, you know, there's things that harken back to the, to the, to the animated Dumbo that I think play really well in a, you know, in, in this film. I had the circus family, which is the intimate, you know, Holt's character played by Colin Farrell, the children, Danny DeVito, Michael Keaton, Eva Green. I had those characters who were my big players. And then around them, I had the circus family, which were different small acts that were part of the Medici Circus. The Medici Circus evolves as the story goes on. And that, um, and that circus and those people carry through. They start very, very minimally, very bare bones. Dumbo comes into their lives and their, you know, their audience becomes bigger. Vandeveer comes into their lives and gives it a twist. And, you know, they go off to New York to the urban circus, to the world of a, almost like a, the Palladium was or um, an installation. And that's like a whole other show. It's a circus with, you know, instead of six people, it's a circus with 50 people in one dance, number 200. You know, I think the, the biggest day of that circus, I probably dressed over 200 people as circus acts and 500 people in the crowd. The overall detail kind of thing and, and character things that come through in the costumes are sort of not so much things in the making of the costume, but it's in the finishing of the costume and the aging and the kind of the wear and tear of the costume more than in the, in the sort of design of the costume per se. It's designed to be old, it's not designed to be new, except in the case of, of uh, Van de Veer, who's, you know, who's a showman extraordinaire. He's, He's dealing with bankers, but he's not a banker. He's still like an artist, but he's a, a kind of a bit of a con man. And he has a certain dash to his costumes, and they're very, you know, they're very bespoke. They're very kind of, of, of sort of showy in that way. I've done a lot of movies with Tim Burton. We've known each other through time and through family and through, through our work for very, feels like a long time, I think. 20 years at least, if not more. And the, the thing that every time I come to the table with Tim, he, I forget how individual he is. He's, he's definitely, I mean, it's the Tim I know, but it's always the Tim that surprises me that, that I like and that I embrace. And some of the things, the witty things he's come up with for in this circus, which I really don't want to reveal because people should see that in the movie. It doesn't have to be spoken about. It's something that always happens with Tim, but in this movie I think it's happened in a really big and positive way. It's happened in a way um, that the, you know, the material lends itself to the cast, Michael Keaton, Danny, you know, people he's played with before Eva, you know, all his people that he's played with He's, he's given something that I think is going to be really exciting about the film. And in doing that, he's given me something. And he's, he's um, actually been more vocal with me about how he feels about the costumes in a really positive way, which is, which is great after such a long kind of run with him on different types of shows.
it's a small circus, but we have really great contortionists and, you know, uh, high wire acts and all kinds of cool jugglers and clowns. The clown, we, got, we got amazing clowns in, in uh, the Medici circus. But it is a time, um, you know, it's right after the war, uh, First World War, and uh, there, it's, it's very difficult to keep, to make ends meet in the circus. Um, lots of like, you know, economic things. So everybody's doing, like, uh, the strong man is, is is working as my accountant, and there's all kinds of stuff. You know, the people are pitching in, doing other jobs to help out. And, you know, because we really are a family, and we're trying to make the circus work. There are always layers in Tim's movies, like dualities, not only in the characters, but. You, you see the texture of the sets is like, and also the fact that they are, you know, each in each section or each part of the story. If it's a beginning, middle, and an end, they're all they're all so unique. Each one, the beginning and where the, where and they reflect like Colleen's costumes. They reflect the personality of the whole th troupe, and then the the middle and. All that stuff is so off the you know, charts. Being here at Pinewood, which I really dig, uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're shooting everything in these massive sound stages, and the lights are, the, the, the uh, ceilings are totally silked. Like, we've got a silk here. They're like 300... LED lights, big daylight lights all over the ceiling. And they're controllable by computer. So you can get all the color temperatures. You go from the, all the whole range of the color in there. So when the DP is shooting something that's, like if it's sunset or if it's bright sun or if it's whatever, they can change all that stuff right up there. So we've never... We've never stopped for rain, never stopped for clouds, never stopped for any kind of weather situation. And it's really kind of cool. They are the most talented jugglers and tumblers and acrobats and high wire artists that I've ever seen. I mean, they're just like, it's so great to be around them. And they're constantly, they were constantly doing cartwheels and flips and guys balancing chairs and walking on stuff and like cats they were like you know really like you know really it's like amazing when people have the control over their body that they can you know they feel confident that they can do all that stuff i'm happy to be sitting in this chair i play rongo Rungo the strong man. Um, on the surface, he's like that typical kind of uh, um, uh, 19th century strong man, and he looks like that. But he ends up being the kind of factotum for uh, Danny DeVito's uh, um, circus master. So he's the accountant, he's the musician, um, he's kind of Danny's hard suffering go to get it get it man you know but i love that about him i love that he tries to do everything with the best of his ability uh so you see him playing drums you see him playing uh a trumpet you know you see him pulling weights um and uh i i love the fact that he's just this kind of long suffering really loyal kind of worker in this troupe you know this troupe of um Misfits and oddballs. Diane DeVito is just flat out funny. I mean, he's just funny. He's got incredible energy. Um, he's perfect for this character. Uh, and, and, you know, he's so unassuming. You know, you expect this guy who, this, this small guy, and then he has this huge energy and this powerful voice. <laughs> and an incredibly commanding presence. And um, you, you, um, you kind of go, wow, yeah, that's why you have the career you have, because, uh, you know, you're a very good actor. Um, he brings a lot of great things to, to, to his part.
Colette Marchant, played by uh, Eva Green, another uh, frequent collaborator with Tim. This is the third time they've worked together. And uh, a lot of people have asked, like, okay, so why Eva Green? She's perfect for the role. You know, she's playing a French aerialist. And, uh, you know, Eva has some background, some French background. And uh, she just really encompasses that role. She's had to get past some of her own kind of pickups with heights, as a lot of people, myself included, you know, aren't the most comfortable with heights. But she has just kind of worked so hard to, to be comfortable actually being hoisted 18 feet above the ground to, to swing around and, and, and do aerialist, uh, uh, basically an aerialist act. And uh, she has just, you know, stunned all of us in, uh, in her confidence and, and capabilities at, to be a convincing aerialist. Nico brings just a tremendous am am amount of emotion to the role. You know, it, it, it's a challenging role. It, you know, it's, it's a young girl who's lost her mother, who's being reunited with her father, and, and now feels a connection with, with this baby elephant. And, and really, the challenge for that role is to create that bond. And she's able to express so much with, with, with so little. You, you know, a lot of her role is just kind of seeing the look in her eyes. Or, or the expression on her face and, and the emotions that she's going through. Uh, but then there's a, a, a very much an astute side to that character as well because she's someone that's interested in the sciences and her dreams kind of are uh, past the circus in a way. Like, you know, she, she's very worldly. She realizes there's a whole world out there and she's eager to explore that and, and be a part of it and contribute something to that world. I think a lot of films these days with the technology that's available, you can paint a huge, epic world. But a lot of times you kind of get lost in that world. And Tim understood that there was an importance here within these circus worlds, within, within the Medici Circus, and within Dreamland, uh, that although we see the world behind them, it is only a backdrop to the story that's taking place. And I think that's the beauty of what Tim's brought to this story. And uh, uh, it is, you know, Rick Heinrichs working with Tim, you know, another frequent collaborator going back to their early days at Disney, has helped really uh, Tim shape this world into that grand intimacy. It's quite beautiful that, you know, there's sets and, and scenes that look like they're lifted off of an illustrated or animated page. So uh, they've been able to kind of maintain that look and feel and beauty of that original animated film and bring it into a live action element. Colleen Atwood. A uh, frequent collaborator with Tim. Uh, I think she's costumed most of his films over the next, last probably 30 years and uh, always does exquisite and, and beautiful work. And uh, on this movie, she's really outdone herself. Uh, the scope of the costumes that you have in this film from uh, the dusty Midwest, you know, from costumes that, you know, are a bit more worn down and dusty to the elegance and, and the brilliance of the costumes that you see in uh, V.A. Vandiver's world, you, you know, for a costume designer to have that uh, opportunity to kind of explore this dynamic world, it, amazing opportunity that not only has she stepped up to, she's completely excelled at. I grew up with the animated version and I, I love the story. Uh, and the, this story between the baby elephant and the mother really marked me as a child. Uh, it's such a, a moving, powerful, universal story. Uh, and I think both children and adults can connect with it. I play Colette Marchand. She's a, she's a French aerialist, a huge star uh, that they call the, the Queen of the Heavens. And she's also Vanderveer's girlfriend, who is the owner of Dreamland. Uh, and when you first meet her, she's quite, um, she's quite mysterious, uh, very star-like, quite haughty, quite superior. And beneath this um, mask, this cold exterior, she reveals herself to be quite um, very brave, very kind, and will help Dumbo to, to reunite with his mum. I trained with Catherine Arnold, who is the most amazing aerialist and um, 
um, Fran James, uh, who is uh, the choreographer. So they both helped me to kind of find the physicality of the character. Uh, and I was absolutely, I mean, terrified of, of heights. It was a real phobia. And I told Tim at the beginning, um, you know, I, I don't know if I will be able to do a bit of my stunts. Uh, but these guys really helped me to to get confidence, and uh, and I, I can't believe. I mean, I've been able to do things. I, I mean, it's it's unbelievable to swing really up high and spin and and do some weird choreography. I mean, I, I it was a real challenge, and I'm quite proud of myself on that one. Tim Burton is directing this uh, new version of Dumbo. Uh, he's such an iconic director, uh, a poet, uh, always brings um, yeah, very unique, a very unique vision. Uh, and he, he's a joy to work with. It, it's so, you know, there, there's no tension. It's like a family. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's just a joy to be on set every day. Uh, and he's such a perfect director for this movie because nobody better than him understands people who who don't fit in. Um, so, you know, he, he, he understands vulnerable souls like Dumbo. Van der Veer, Mr. Michael Keaton, is, is bonkers in a, in a lovely way. You know, he's so charismatic, irreverent. Uh, I mean, I was, uh, again, I had to pinch myself. I was like, oh my God, he's Beetlejuice. <laughs> wow. I mean, those are like, iconic actors. It's just, uh, you know, I, it was hard for me to stay in character. I was <laughs> just like, wow. Kalina Atwood is, I mean, she's a genius. She, her, all my costumes are just so beautiful. Uh, I mean, I have like performance outfits, gold, red. Uh, you know, I, sometimes I felt like I was um, uh, like a ballerina on those jewelry boxes, you know, like red tutu. Um, so beautiful, uh, very fairy tale, fairy tale like that. That the colors are very vibrant. It's very, um, it's very glamorous, and I mean, she did a magnificent job on that one. We care for him because, like, we've been through the, a similar experience because obviously our mother died when we were little and his mother was taken away. So we know how it can feel um, at points. So we, since we've been through it, we don't want um, Dumbo to feel what we've um, been through. Tim Burton. Um, is directing the movie and he's definitely a fun character to work with because he's always very um, exciting and is very creative and full of ideas and always jumping around the place and it's just it's nice to have someone directing you that's a lot more joyful. The sets are definitely probably one of the best parts of the film. They're enormous um, every time there's a new set, um, me and Nico were just like, like that's incredible because it's never like tiny. It's never like not exciting at all. It's never like all right. It's always like mind blowing. Like what they've done, it's like incredible. It's like yes, new set, new set. Tim Burton's like. A, an amazing director so um, I think it will be a very good movie because of that and also um, seeing how um, everything's like quite precise like if there's a bit wrong we'll do it again um, I think that everything's gonna be like exactly on point so um, it would it will be like properly properly cool and also Dumbo is a real big adventure. If you've seen the cartoon, you know it's a, a big adventure. So it's a, quite an exciting movie to watch. Aaron Kroger, who wrote the script for this, 
um, and I was speaking to him a few weeks ago when he flew over. And I told him, I said, he's done such an amazing job with this script because he's taken all the, the, the cute, lovable, memorable aspects of the original story and modernized it. Even though it's still set in the same time period, 1911, 1912, it's modern in its feel, in its um, in in the messages it's it's uh, um, delivering um, with regards to how we feel about animals now, as opposed to how we felt about animals 70 years ago, um, and that kind of thing. And that, that that to me is one of my favorite things about about this is how they've taken that beautiful story or the, the, the essence, the heart of that beautiful story and just completely modernize it and brought it up to date. I play a character called Niels Skellig, who's uh, basically um, Darth Vader to Van der Veer's Emperor. I am a eh, pretty horrible person. I don't like animals very much, so it's a bit of a stretch acting-wise for me. And uh, He's a, the, you know, the great white South African hunter. I have, I'm, I have a South African accent in this, and uh, it's the first time I've done a South African accent, and it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, just, a, I'm a bad guy. I'm going to be, I'm not going to be able to go to a Disney park after this is released. <laughs> I'm going to be hated by everyone. <laughs> Michael as Van Der Veer is just, is perfect. Danny is so beyond perfect in the role of Medici. Colin is, is such a charming guy, and he's just, you just want to love him, you know, as, as, as Holt. The kids are great. Um, it just, and, and all the, the, the other characters in the circus, and it, it, it's, I mean, we had Alan Arkin, and it just, it's almost, it is dreamland. Working on a show like this with Tim, the cast, where we're shooting the the stages that the the sets it's it's kind of like a dream job you're going to look forward to 90 minutes of laughing sneering crying and then you're going to have a big smile on your face at the end of the movie i i've seen a couple of previews of some of the vfx this this movie's going to be beautiful just the whole look of the movie and if the finished movie is even 10% of the feels of what I got when reading the script, it's all over. It's, it's good. You know, the circus has fallen on hard times. There's the, the, it's 1919, the, the, the country's just coming out of the First World War. Also, film and television are, are now the way people are starting to find their entertainment. And so the notion of going out to the circus, that concept is a bit in decline. Um, and also, there's, these big conglomerates are starting to buy up all the small town circuses. So because of all of that, the circus is on hard times, but they're still getting by. Um, but Max thinks their fortune's about to change. He's bought a new elephant. This elephant is pregnant and audiences love babies. And so he thinks this will change everything. And of course, this baby is born. Um, he's surprised to see that this baby has giant ears. It's Dumbo. Um, you know, the only place for this, for this uh, animal is in the circus act. And so he puts the animal in the circus act. But soon after, through circumstance, this elephant flies before an entire circus-going circus audience. And the, then the movie really becomes about how will the world, world react. Colin Farrell's playing Holt Farrier, and um, super happy to have him in the movie. He's a fantastic actor, and I think in this role, he's bringing this great emotionality and humility to it, and this sort of, just this sort of fatherly instinct that I think really gives the movie its emotional core um, on the human side of things, you know, outside of Dumbo. And it's, it's just really nice to have that anchor because there's, it's a movie where there's a flying elephant in certain scenes and you're getting a lot of comedy and you're getting these big set pieces and there's just a lot great sense of wonder. But it's nice to anchor all of that to a character or an actor like Colin Farrell who's just bringing this, you know, this weight to the film um, and, and this empathy that I think really kind of plays itself through. And it's great because he's playing, you know, this 
trick horse rider who's been a cavalryman, and so he gets to, you know, he gets to be a cowboy in a lot of ways, which is a lot of fun to play around with some of the archetypal things about cowboys from that period. And so he gets to do those things in the movie. Michael Keaton, who's a wonderful actor and is bringing a sort of both a gravitas to the role, which I think is really great in a movie like this, and just an affectation that I think gives it its really it gives it a, a unique flavor, um, and it really kind of fits within the Tim Burton universe quite well. So I'm very excited for people to see it, and Michael's an incredible actor. It's great to see him work with Tim Burton again, uh, and to have him on the side of the movie is just incredible. Every aspect of the film feels like it has Tim Burton in it, so you get this very whole, kind of complete film that feels just very Tim Burton. It's hard to describe exactly, but we've all seen it for for many many years now, and so it's a real it's a it's a real joy to be a part of that. There's a there's a an aesthetic that that just he he sees the world in a certain way, and that's brought to life by some great, you know crew members that he's worked with for a very long time, and some new ones as well. Um, but it all just kind of builds up to this really wholly created universe, even if it does happen to be 1919, in, you know, in our, in our own in our own history. Um, and so that's, that's really exciting for me. And he also just has the ability to, you know, cast great performers and to get people who are perfect for the role, but also a little unexpected. Um, in a way that I think will make the movie really special. And I think that's just, in general, one of the things that I like about the way that he works is that everything feels like just a little unexpected or surprising, funnier than you thought it might be. Um, so to me, it's, you know, it's, it, I couldn't be more excited to have him working on this movie. My name is Van de Beer and I own the I own a giant circus. It's huge, it's enormous, and and corporate, um, and pretty damn great. I, mean, I gotta say it is. I mean, it's 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 great. And and uh, the Medici or Medici, however, they kept getting changed. It depends on who, who who's in the scene, how they pronounce it. Danny's circus is great. It's wonderful. It's old school. It's nice. Doing okay. This is like. You know, you're a conglomerate, you snatch that up. You just pick that little company up. But he's got the thing I want, which could make me even bigger and richer and more powerful, and that's Dumbo. When people, when people talk about uh, unique or artist, he, he just is that. If he tried not to be that, he, he couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it. If he tried to do something outside of him being original, I don't think he could do it. Not only wouldn't he want to do it, I don't think he's capable. And that's rare. It sounds like, well, yeah, that's what we all do. It isn't what we all do. It's very, there are very few people in the world in any category or in any uh, endeavor, actually, that you can say that about. Ava plays Colette. She kind of is, is, is my arm piece, and, but it's a relationship which is going to dissolve real soon <laughs> as soon as she finds out. She kind of probably thinks, he's a jerk, but he's rich, and I could probably have a few laughs with this guy. And then she goes, nah, he's too much of a jerk. <laughs> and, then, and I'm gone. I'm jettisoned. Um, she ultimately does the right thing, and, you know, and she also helps pull this little family together. He's just always so, so great and as I say you know he's facile he can he can adjust uh, you know real real quickly with Tim or with the other actor or uh, and he's just so honest and and in particularly in 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 this I you know I hate to make it sound cliched but he's 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 he's, such, he's got naturally such likability Danny himself and Danny's characters you know you just you like the guy and and in this, you, you, it's really a, just he's a sweet guy, you know, and you care about him a lot. You want him to, uh, you, want his, you want him to succeed. One of Tim's most beautiful movies. It's truly beautiful. The, co the colors, this, this color scheme is so extraordinary. So we walk, we walk on, we walk onto the set, and we both kind of stop, and it was stunningly beautiful and. Um, um, enormous and huge, and in and it's the day we're going to shoot the big parade that I 
that I throw, my big parade. And we go down the main, this main street and all my attractions are, are, are uh, on display, going down either side and then little offshoots where you can go into Playland or you can go to all these different little venues I have in turn, all under the same roof, literally and figuratively, of my circus. You got to see this in a theater, I think. This is this is big. This is a this is a movie, man. You know, there's films and there's stories and there's movie. This is a movie. This is this is this is you know just the sound and the there's so much to look at and it's and it's a really you know beautiful little tale and uh, yeah you got to see this on a big screen. I think I did about four or five auditions. And the first audition was a self-tape, which I kind of prefer because I wasn't nervous, I wasn't meeting anyone, it was fine. And then I got a call back, which is when I first met Tim, and that was terrifying. He he was so nice, but so terrifying at the same time because it's like, it's Tim Burton, like it was crazy. And then I did, I think, three more auditions, and that's when I first met Finn, who plays my younger brother in the movie. And from there, it just all went really quickly. And then I think I was just at school and I got home and they were like, you got the part. And I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Dumbo is an elephant and he is a really cute elephant. And he is an outsider when he first arrives to the circus. And because he has these exceptionally large ears that it's quite a ve very strange at first and at first they don't really know how to deal with that and just think it's weird and don't really want him but then because of his exceptionally large ears he learns to fly and that in itself is an incredible gift and they all suddenly are obsessed with him and loved him even though my character and Finley's character Joe are obsessed with him from the beginning but we learn that he's got this incredible talent and he becomes probably the most famous animal in the world. Holt is played by Colin Farrell and what I like about working with Colin is how insanely nice he is all the time, which is weird because he's such like an incredibly large star. It's really nice that he's so down to earth and not only is he really incredible throughout the film, he is also so like understanding like if I'll get a line wrong he's just very nice and I'll be all nervous about it but he's just so incredibly kind and compassionate towards everyone on set. Joe is played by Finley Hobbins or Finn and what I like about working with Finn is because he's just like my actual little brother, like I spend so much time with Finn that he really does seem like my little brother to me now because I've probably been with him for about five months now. But he is just, I feel like I could tell Finn anything and he's always there to talk to me about anything. And as well, he is one of the only kids on set, which is cool because if not, I would just be surrounded by loads of grown ups. But I really like working with Finn. The, uh, the Medici Circus is, uh, it's, when you research things, a lot of it is absorbing a sense of period and, and texture and color and graphics and uh, character. And um, that, and certainly on a Tim Burton film, uh, that percolates and it comes out as something a little bit different. Um, uh, I think that one of our earliest attempts to stylize the circus, you can see easily in the, the way that the tent itself, the big top, is designed. Um, there, it just needed to say that there's something kind of uh, a, um, s optimistic from many, many years ago and something a little sad about it at the same time and a little slumped over. You know, the statement it's making about the circus is that it's a little hard on its luck, um, but it's certainly uh, trying to put on a good show. Uh, that's, that was the idea we were trying to put across.
the Medici Circus and the family is, um, there's a kind of a warmth, I think we wanted to put out, uh, both in color, um, you know, warmer colors and the way it was shot. Um, it's, it's not all happy warmth. It's a, um, there's, um, there's definitely contrast and shadow and, uh, um, environments and um, silhouette shapes and there's mystery as well much like families have. Um, it's not all uh, a sweetness and light in families. Um, and to contrast that, we've, we've created a kind of a cold palette for Vanderveer's world. And I think that Tim and Ben are shooting it that way as well. Um, at the same time, it's supposed to be the most spectacular uh, circus uh, fair environment that the world has ever seen. So. Um, we've tried to make it as, as, um, as seductive, as slick, as beautifully lit, and as um, mind-blowing as possible for the first time that the Medici Circus and the Farrier see it. Uh, it truly is like Oz to Dorothy's Kansas, I think. Um, and so as a result of that, we have a very clear uh, establishment of the con central contrast of the film. We needed to put across um, life and um, uh, a believability to the environment. And so we had to uh, bring real grass onto all of our stages. We had to keep them alive with lighting. We had to water them all the time and we still had to replace them frequently. So we, I think each of our stages went through about three different soddings, I think we called them, um, so that uh, the film has a constant sense of uh, a reality and life beneath it, so that it didn't look like AstroTurf. Well, the process um, that Tim and I have kind of forged over the years um, I think there, there's a kind of a um, silent understanding of the fact that we're both um, very interested in going for the emotional core of the film. And um, Tim's own particular stylistic tendency is for simplicity and for um, just a very clear visual language that um, puts across the emotion of the script and the character. He's called Alfred. He's an Indian rock python. Uh, he's at least 10 feet, if not more. He weighs, God, uh, he's very heavy. Uh, he's at least 15 kilos, if not more. And um, it's interesting because he's very tame. Uh, very, very tame. I, when I came to meet Tim, one one of the things I did was to be introduced to Alfred, and you know, and I was. He said, "Are you are you spooked by snakes?" I said, "No, not at all." So you know, fine. He 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 got to put his tongue out, and he got my, the feel, my feel, and I got his feel. But it's very interesting. The minute he gets round you, they draw warmth from your from your own body, and he feels very comfortable, and he started to relax. He did a scene with uh, the organ grinder and uh, the, the lady who's playing the mermaid, Sharon, and myself. This is a scene when they're feeling very depressed because the mother elephant, Dumbo's mum, has been taken away. And everyone's feeling low and depressed. And it's an outdoor scene. There's a little fire crackling, the stars in the heavens. And just these three people, and she's singing that famous, yeah, baby mine, don't you cry, put your heart next. She sings it so well. And um, and uh, the, the organ grinder just accompanies her with his little baby thing. And I've never played a flute, but I learned how to play a couple of notes, and I accompany her on the, or join in on the flute. And the end of that scene, 
moved everybody. You can always tell, actors can tell, because the, the, the unit and, the, <laughs> and people you know, around get moved by it. And I said to Tim, it's a lovely scene, because it was so simple. And uh, he came back a few days later and he said, I saw the rushes. And he said, I appreciate what you said, he said to me. I knew that we would have to find a musical identity for Dumbo that was purely Dumbo. And uh, Tim wanted me to find a very simple theme because he feels like it's a very simple story. And um, I also knew that I was going to have fun writing some uh, sad and emotional music. Tim, when he approached me, he said, you know, it's live action, but it's also animated. And uh, the through line of the story is very simple. And so we're going to want the music to be very careful to be also simple, melodically and, and how it's being told not to either be too realistic nor too uh, fantastical. There's a sort of a a grand intimacy about things, you know? I mean, it's, it's done, all those movies are done on a beautiful, artful scale, and yet the themes and the emotions are very, try to be simple and human and, and relatable. So, you know, we never wanted the thing to get too big. We always felt like that, that the important thing, that, that was the background, that was the setting of it, and that the important thing was the people and the, the characters in it. So, you know, for all its bigness, we tried to create an intimacy with the cast and, and what the story was about. We come into the story, and it, it, you know, it's uh, right after World War I. It, it, times are tough, things, you know, people are struggling, the circus is struggling. So, you know, Danny's circus is, even though it's a big traveling circus, is kind of hitting hard times. And, uh, you know, so, so. It, 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 it follows that and, and, and this struggling, weird family of circus people, and that's when Dumbo comes into it. And, you know, that's where, you know, his story, Dumbo and the rest of the people in the circus and um, all everybody's stories were parallel to, to what Dumbo's is. I've always uh, liked Colin Farrell, his work, and so to me it was great to work, finally work with him. And, uh, you know, because he's a kind of actor, and this is why I love him, he's just done different kinds of things. I mean, you know, he, he's not a performer that wants to be the same in every kind of thing either. You know, he wants to do things and, and try things. And, you know, being like a Disney kind of hero, it's a tough, it's a tough job to do on its own. And, but to give it humor, to give it some uh, emotion and reality, you know, you're taking this story that's kind of a big fable and trying to give it a human emotion. And, you know, he was great at at giving it that, giving it reality, giving it the humor, giving a sign of an internal backstory without telling everything, and, uh, and uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, he can ride a horse, which, if he, that was an extra added bonus, but if he hadn't done that, we'd still be shooting the movie. I love working with Eva, because she, you know, she's like a, like a movie star, you know, that's what the part it needed. It needs somebody that's got a bigger, uh, uh, that looks like one of those kind of 20s movie stars, you know, and, and she's not only a great actress, but now she can, now she's a trapeze artist as well. And I mean, she worked so hard. And I mean, I, no one will ever know uh, on a daily basis what she did in, in, in terms of training for, for this. And so, uh, that was beautiful to see. What Danny brought to it is that, you know, there's a kind of, there's a larger than life sort of nature to the sort of storybook and fable aspect of it. But what Danny is really good at is taking uh, that largeness and giving it a reality, you know, and that, that's the key with this. No matter how big anything got, we always try to keep it into uh, an emotional reality within its own framework to the, the, and Danny's very good at that. He can be big, but he can also, show you real emotion.